Here's a statement up on the screen that I'm going to talk about for a few minutes because um, I was reminded of this this week as I was talking about expectations. I talked about it last week, talked about, uh, and if you weren't here, don't worry about that. And, you know, uh, I'll just re-preach the sermon right now, okay? Um, no, it talked about the expectations you can have of God. And so on that line of thought, I thought about this quote up here, that the church is one of the few institutions in the world that does not exist primarily for the benefit of its members. And Ed uh, Stetzler said this in the book, Breaking the Missional Code. And I just find that a wonderful, provocative thing to think about uh, uh, when we're talking about expectations. And as you look at that and turn that over in your head, maybe you agree with it, maybe you disagree with it, maybe it confuses you, uh, maybe, maybe you're not sure what quite to make of that. So let's unpack that a little bit. This statement says that the church is one of the few institutions in the world that does not primarily, and primarily is a key word, does not exist primarily for the benefit of its members, primarily. Now, I understand what the tension is. I understand what this smacks up against. It smacks up against the truth that we live in a culture and we live in a world that's the opposite of this. And that doesn't mean we're bad. It doesn't mean we're rotten people, but let's name this. We live in a culture, we live in a, in a time as followers of Jesus, a culture that says, um, hey, have it your way, right? We live in a culture that says the customer's always right, the customer's always number one. And that may work for a business, but today what I'm saying as we're talking about expectations is we have to first understand ourselves as a church and what the church is and why our expectations are different than a business than like a car dealership. The word primarily is a key word. In other words, the church's first or primary objective is to impact and influence the world. That is our first and our primary objective. It is to make followers of Jesus. That's what he said in Matthew 28. It is to make more and more mature followers of Jesus, to demonstrate the work and the ways of God uh, shown to us by Jesus Christ. That is our primary objective. Let me go a next step. Our primary objective is to reach the lost. Our primary objective, church, is to, is to bring in those who are not yet believers and followers of Jesus Christ and connect them to God and to God's people. That is our primary objective. Primary. And let me tell you the secondary objective because it's important. Our secondary objective is, is to be about the work of helping those who have said yes to following Jesus, helping those who have said yes to grow more mature in their faith and practice of the Christian faith. So does that make sense? You look at this and say, primarily, we're not here primarily for our benefit. Secondarily, yes. Our primary, primary objective is to reach those who have not yet said yes to following Jesus. And secondarily, uh, we exist for those who have said yes to help us all grow more mature in our Christian faith, to help us grow more mature in our practice of the Christian lifestyle. That's why we're here. It's why we exist. The church is one of the few institutions in the world that does not exist primarily for the benefit of its members. And again, you turn that over in your head because we're talking about expectations. What do you expect from your church? What do you expect? As I talk about why we're here, the primary and secondary objective, I think about Grandview United Methodist Church. And how here at Grandview United Methodist Church, um, well, you know, it was established a long time ago, but since I've been here, we've looked at this and said, well, we know what our mission is. We were commissioned, we were commissioned to go, primarily reach the lost, and secondarily to, to make more mature followers of Jesus that have already said yes to Jesus. And so we tried to, to, to break that out and say, well, how are we going to get there? How are we going to achieve the mission? How are we going to help people, inspire people? How are we going to guide people, right? What's our system to help guide people so that we can achieve, achieve our objective? Is everybody with me on that so far? I'm sounding kind of like a business management consultant or something. You know, like, but but, but it's, it's, it's how I see this. How are we going to get there? How are we going to achieve our primary and secondary objective? Well, here at Grandview, we said, well, we understand it like this. We're called to love God, love others, and serve the world. We broke it down into these three things, and it comes from Scripture right? Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, right? So the Gospels are full of this, about loving God and loving others. And the Gospels are also full over and over and over about serving the world, serving beyond yourself. So that's how we put it at Grandview. 
And we said, this is how we're going to read our, reach and meet our primary and secondary objective. Love God, love others, and serve the world. This is meant to guide us. It's meant to inspire us. It's meant to keep us online. It's why there's a whole uh, wall up here um, that uh, this whole wall, maybe if you're new to Grandview, you don't know what this is about. Um, the wall came about in 2009 when I came here, and I was trying to say to the Grandview Church, hey, we need to build, we need to build a healthy, vital church here. That's our purpose. We need to grow. We need to expand. We need to meet our primary and secondary objective, make more and more mature followers of Jesus. So way back in the fall of 2009, I started with these foundational blocks and, and preached a couple sermons and saying, Jesus is the foundation of everything. And it's got to be based on Him. It's got to be based on the gospel, not us, not our preferences, not our opinions. It's got to be based on Jesus. And then in the weeks that followed, I started bringing these blocks in. And again, the image was, we're building something here. And so the white blocks, um, the white blocks are love God, and the red blocks are love others, and the green blocks are serve the world. And then it's broken out to help us understand partly what that means, but, but, but understand the broad brushstroke. Love God, love others, and serve the world is a system for becoming a more mature follower of Jesus, and it is what we invite people to do um, who have not yet said yes to Jesus. Love God, love others, serve the world. So take all of that, and let's go back to this statement. We don't exist primarily for the benefit of our members. Tension, tension. See, see what this pushes up against. Let's take a next step. What this pushes up against is that expectation that we sometimes begin to have in the church because we begin to see the church as just another good institution. We see the church as just another club or another um, a, a, a social gathering or as a business. See, that's the danger living in this consumeristic society is that we're told this about everything else, and so we begin to apply it to the church. And so the problem some people have with this, with this statement, though they may not admit it, is that what creeps into our head is an expectation or an attitude that says the church's primary purpose is to serve me. The church's primary purpose is to meet my needs and make me happy. And if I'm not happy and if I don't get my way, I'm walking or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to withhold my participation. If I don't get my way, I will withhold my money, I'll withhold my, my, my time, I'll withhold my attendance. In fact, in fact, the church is one of those places in the world um, that I've seen it through the years um, where we do have, and you know, now this isn't even nice to say because of what's going on in our world, but we have people that take hostages in the church. Did you know that? Happens all the time. I want my way, and until I get my way, I'm going to hold you hostage with my attendance, my membership, and my money. Does anybody know of that ever happening? I do. And it goes against this. It does. And that's why I bring this up is that many times we begin to have an expectation that, that the church exists primarily to serve me and make sure I'm happy, right? And that's why it's at odds with that statement. You know, the video, I want to watch a video right now because I think this illustrates the point I'm making. I know that you're smart people and you'll get this. You're going to get it when you watch this video that this is what we're up against when we talk about expectations and the expectations that you have of your church, of Grandview United Methodist Church. This video may not be you all the time, but it touches all of us, including me. Watch and consider this. I am my car. I am my clothes. I am my bank account. I am my house. I obey my thirst. I have it my way. I just do it. I deserve a break today. I double my pleasure, double my fun. I live the high life because I'm worth it. I'm looking out for number one. I wait for nothing. I have a million choices. I get what I want. I do what's best for me. I spend my time where I want to spend it. No one wastes it but me. I have the world at my fingertips. If it doesn't work, I'll throw it out and get a new one. If I'm uncomfortable, I leave. There's another place just down the street. If I'm unhappy, I'm missing something. I find it. I buy it. If I want it, I get it. I accumulate. I collect. I acquire. I take. I use. I devour. I consume. I am not the center of the universe, but I'm the center of mine. I want to know what's in it for me. I want to know what I get out of it. I'm here to find happiness. I live for comfort. I exist to be served. The world exists to serve me. I am the customer. The customer is king. I am king.
You see, again, that may not be our attitude and action 100% of the time, and I get that it's not mine, but I'm telling you that illustrates the point. That's what we're up against. That's what we're up against is that's what's going on beyond the walls in our culture and society. And the sad, things is, sad thing is, is that many times those expectations and attitudes creep within the walls of the church. You know, we're, we're, we're all, you know, broken, sinful people. We've sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Again, it doesn't mean we're rotten, no good, and God kicks us. But we need to identify this. Is that many times that, what we saw in that video, is what creeps in. And we bring it into the church and say, I expect to be served. And I expect to have it my way. And if I don't get it, I'm going to move on. But the fact is, the church is not meant to be a car dealership. I think about car dealerships not because I dislike car dealerships. I like them a lot. I like cars, right? Some of you guys with me on that? I like new shiny cars that smell good, all right? I like dealing for cars. I have fun doing that, and I always have. But understand, the church is not a car dealership. A car dealership, when you watch their ads and you read them in the paper, um, they're in business to make money. Good. They're in business to build relationships with people. Good for them. But they say things like, hey, we promise you the best deal. Come and see us. We promise you the best deal. We got the style you want. We got the model you want. We got all of the options you want. We're going to give you all kinds of add-ons. We're going to give you extended warranties and special offers. We don't do that in the church. Are you with me? We can't. We can't. Though once upon a time, sometimes I worry that the church maybe starts to do that. Is that the church and the leaders of the church start to kind of give in. And they say, well, we just need to be all things to everybody because we just need more people, more, more, more people, numbers, numbers, numbers. But I think we need to be crystal clear that we're not a car dealership. We need to be clear in our understanding because it impacts our expectations. But one of the ways to understand, what are we here to do? Well, we're not here In other words, to make sure everybody's happy. And y'all are going to agree with me that if that was our goal, we would fail and we'd always be miserable. You agree with that? Say yes. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, you should agree with that because that that isn't going to win. I mean, I remember being 20 years old as a pastor, and I had the mistaken belief that that was part of my job, is to make sure my church members were all happy. And I found out quickly that I was never going to win that game. Y'all with me still? And if that becomes your goal, then you get soon disappointed and discouraged because we're all human beings. So let's understand we're not a car dealership. And we, we had the quote up there that says, we exist primarily for the benefit of others who have not yet said yes to Christ. Okay, so let's understand this. See, what, who are we? What are we about? Well, we don't offer special warranties and any option you want, whatever it takes to make you happy. Here's what we do offer. In the church here at Grand United Methodist Church, we offer the means and the methods to connect you with God and God's people. That's as simple as I can make it. We organize ourselves and we spend time, money, energy, treasure. We, we pray about it, uh, think about it, plan, organize, promote, encourage, invite. And it's all about the means and the methods so that you and so that others who have not said yes can connect to God and God's people, means and methods. One of the ways I'll connect into last week is that we do what we do here in the church um, to help you experience the forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ so that you can experience and expect from God to be provided for and for God to be present and for God to give you peace that passes all understanding, not as the world gives. You can expect that. And to tie these together, that's why we organize and do what we do here at Grandview United Methodist Church. This is, in other words, if you're, if you're listening, this is what you can expect. You can expect that Grandview United Methodist Church, the church, is going to organize and be involved, plan, organize, promote means and methods to help you, to help you connect with God and connect with God's people. Another way to put that is you can expect us at Grandview United Methodist Church to organize, plan, organize, and promote means and methods to help you love God, right? To organize and promote ways um, uh, uh, to, to help you worship God right? We do it four times a week, in case you didn't know that. You have four different options. Some people say, well, you're coming really close to be a consumer-driven church. No, we're not. We just, we love to worship God. Amen? So we give you four options, right? We give you four options, but plan, organize, promote, organize means and methods to help you love God through worship. We talk about giving money to God. We're not afraid of that. We say, hey, this is one of the ways God set up for us to show our gratitude. So we encourage and we teach you to tithe and to move towards tithing and to give a portion of your income to God through Grandview. It's in one of our bricks. We do that, right? You can expect that. And again, that's intentional. Right? It's not to guilt you. It's not to beat you over the head. It's to say, hey, here's a means and a method. 
Now remember, we're Methodists. You all remember that, right? We like our methods, right? It's a means and a method to help you love God, just like prayer and just like Bible. And that's why we organize things like Sunday schools and why we organize cell groups and why we keep pushing you and encouraging you. Hey, get yourself attached to a small group. Get your attached, yourself attached to a small group because that's one of the means and methods that we use to help you love God. You can expect that. We're going to encourage that. You know, it always makes me think about um, through the years, you know, I've had people say to me, hey, hey, pastor, I'm at your church because where I was before, I wasn't being fed. I wasn't being spiritually fed. And, and, and sometimes we'll even have somebody leave Grandview and say, I just wasn't being fed. Let me make a pastor comment on this, okay? Not to demean or put anybody down, but here's an observation. Is that my problem with that comment, first of all, I agree with that. We come here to be spiritually fed. But my, my, my comment on that is the only people I know that need to be fed are babies. The rest of us are capable of doing some of that ourselves. You agree with that? And so that's why we look at what we set up here at Grandview United Methodist Church as the Jesus buffet, right? I know in the, in the bulletin it says Buffett, like, you know, Jimmy Buffett. It's buffet, okay? <laughs> buffet. It's like we, we, put out, we put out Jesus food, like cell groups, and Sunday schools, and, and groups groups to get you together so you can pray, and so you can worship, and you can serve together. That's why we do it. It's a means and a method to help you be spiritually fed. And my point is this, but we're not going to force it down your throat. You have to make an effort to say yes. Fair enough? And let me be clear, that's an expectation. That's an expectation. And so, well, you know, the other side of that is you can expect this. You can expect your church to provide means and methods to help you better love God. And in the same way, you can expect Grandview United Methodist Church to be, to be working, planning, organizing, promoting, praying, carrying out, encouraging ways to help you love others. That's why we do a lot of things that we do, folks. And, and some of you know that, but I'm going to remind you, is that every activity... Every event, everything that goes on here has two purposes, right? And the first purpose is to help connect you with God and with God's people. Love God, love others. The other purpose, no matter what it is, whether it's picking up sticks at pictured rocks or whether it's a, a holiday fair or a cell group or whatever, um, is, is what it is. It's to pick up sticks at pictured rocks. But the first is to help you connect with God and God's people. And so you can expect this is that we will continue to organize events and organize opportunities to help facilitate people coming together. And that's the red bricks. We will, you can expect us to help you gather with other people and get to know them so that you can grow to love them. See how those all flow together? You can expect Grandview, me, staff, other members, the people sitting next to you, behind you, in front of you, this is what you can expect. We're going to help you and help us Love people, right? And, and go back to our primary objective. We're going to communicate that so that people who are not yet within the walls of this church, who have not yet said yes to Jesus, we're going to say, we're going to help you love other people because this is what God has called us to do. And so that's why we do what we do with our warm hospitality here. That's why we have goldfish and cookies. Are you with me? That's why we have people standing at the doors greeting and why we, we try and encourage you to welcome one another to church is to help you love people. It's why we do Sunday school classes. It's why we do cell groups. It's why we have dragon boat teams. It's why we, like every other church around, almost every other church, have tractor poles, right? <laughs> why do we do that? Just because it's cool? No. We want to help you love other people. Why, at the end of May, why are we going to do a bless the bikers again? Because it's cool? Because I love to have Harleys on this stage? No. Because we believe, I believe, that we are called first to reach those who are not yet part of this church and second um, to help those within the church to grow more spiritually mature. So you can expect us to continue to plan, organize, and promote ways to help you love other people. It's those events, it's, it's work days, it's United Methodist women's meetings, it's men's breakfast, it's, it's, it's waxing floors, it's quilts. You know, every Thursday, the women that meet here and they quilt, they turn out 40 quilts a year. Can you believe that? But listen, we're not in the quilt business. You all get that, don't you? We're in the love God, love others business. That's why they turn out 40 quilts. My goodness, man, we're keeping Dubuque County warm, right? And we're keeping them warm because love God, love others, serve the world. That's what I'm wanting you to get. 
we do this and you can expect us, me, and others to help you, to help you, means and methods to love others and to serve the world. And that's that last point that probably goes without saying. Is that that's something you can expect to be asked, invited, encouraged. It goes back to what the Apostle Paul said to the very early church. Hey, you're part of the body. You have something to offer. It's what we sang. You have a little light inside of you. Now let it shine. Don't hide it under a bushel basket. Based on your experiences, your life, your gifts, your talent, your abilities, and your availability and season of your life, you know, you can expect that you're going to be invited to serve because you're, you're, you're part of the crew. Because remember, we're a hospital ship, not a cruise ship. Remember that analogy? Remember that way to understand it? We're all part of the crew. And the crew all has to work, and we've got to take care of the crew, but we're not a cruise ship. We're just a few people. People are served. You can expect, you can expect to be invited and encouraged to serve God through Grandview United Methodist Church based on your availability, skills, gifts, talents, and expectations. That's an expectation. And on the flip side of that, we expect you to say yes. Let's be clear about that. Are you still with me? We expect you to say yes because we're a hospital ship. There isn't any room here for somebody to just sit back and say, what have you done for me lately? Like the video we just watched. It doesn't work that way. That's the culture we've built into place here. I have women, I have women at 8 o'clock through the years, you know, they're like, I'm 96 years old. How am I supposed to serve? You know my answer to that? Can you pray? Pray for me. As some of you know, your pastor needs it, right? Pray for me. I'm, I mean, you know, I came in this morning, and one of my loving church members reminded me I came in this morning at 8 o'clock, and they said, hey, you're about to be a half century old. <sighs> half century, half century. Man, I need to get busy. My life's more than half over. I don't think I've accomplished much. So that's kind of depressing, right? You know? But I say that, hey, you're, you can expect that we will help you serve. And on the flip side of that, you're expected to serve. And you're expected to love God, love others, and serve the world. It all comes together. It all comes together. Grandview expects from you, and you can expect from Grandview. Again, this is why we're here, folks. And maybe you'd never thought about it. But I'm going to call us into a time of prayer right now because this. See, you can have these expectations of Grandview. You can expect that we will help you love God. And you can expect that we'll be helping you love others. And you can expect that we will help, that all of us together will help you serve God according to your abilities, availability, passions, and gifts. And on the flip side, we expect you to step up and to love God and to love others and serve the world. And that's a tough call, so we're going to pray about it right now. Leo, if you want to give us some music, let's pray. Lord God, I do pray for your help for all of us because sometimes what you've called us to do is so intimidating, God, and we're so busy. We've got so many things and so many issues and conflicts and problems going on in our life some weeks. So Lord, we confess to you that th this call, this call to follow you and do what you did intimidates us and scares us sometimes. So I pray for your help. I pray that you help us to be unafraid. I pray that you help every person in this room feel it in their head and their heart that you've called them to be part of your movement, part of something big, part of something that's going to change the world. Lord, lift us up and inspire us with that word. I pray for this in Jesus' name. And together in one voice, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.